So we're at the entrance of the Freeze Art Fair in its 10th edition. We're about to go inside and look around and uh, see what we can find in terms of uh, large sculpture, installations, uh, some more classic works. And of course, we're going to be looking at uh, hopefully some prices because this is an art fair and the dealers have assembled here from all over the world to make some money. So uh, follow me and we'll see what we can do. This is a brand new piece, Paul McCarthy piece. Uh, can you talk about it a bit? It's massive silicone. It's called White Snow Head, mm -hmm. and it is uh, skin color silicone, mm -hmm. and comes from the body of work of White Snow. Part of this new body of work, which is working on since a couple of years, and which will end up in a big installation mm -hmm. uh, forest with the with the house and with white snow, which will be finished next May and shown at the Armory Uptown in, in New York. I understand you sold the piece. Yes, the, the piece has been placed mm -hmm. and it was $1.3 million. We always uh, begin before the fair to talk to different uh, collectors or institutions mm -hmm. about what we bring and it has been decided in the first 30 minutes. sculptures from the show are from 2007 so they're sort of going back to that particular movie is called Ivy Area and these sculptures the three sculptures um, are a body of work that relate specifically to that movie obviously the movies are the most sort of central part of Ryan's work on one hand or what people think of as central to his work but um, the element of sculpture has always been significant and um, and it was sort of an important opportunity to be able to show this kind of background history of how, that's, how that started to play out from earlier on. The booth in general is actually primarily three artists that while they're not new per se, they're, they're relatively new to the gallery. In each case, it's Mika Rottenberg, Josephine McSipper, Ryan. They're an interesting mix of sort of being aesthetically super powerful, but also content driven as well. And for me, it's really important that even in a world where uh, there is so much new, how unfortunately little there is that is content driven. The painting we're looking at, uh, it's in a, uh, the Antwerp Gallery of Zeno. And this is a work by Jack Witten, and it's called Epsilon Group 2 from 1977 and what's interesting about the painting apart from the fact that it's on the wall here is that the uh, Tate they buy works at freeze every year they have a budget so this is one of the pieces that they chose so that's quite a coup both for the gallery and it sort of is a interesting sort of curatorial dimension to the fair where they're people going around not just with pocketbooks and taking them back to their living rooms, but this will actually enter the uh, museum's collection. We're at the um, David Kordansky Gallery, which is based in Los Angeles, and we're in a um, one-person installation of painting by Jonas Wood. He's a, he's a fairly young artist, uh, Los Angeles-based, although from Boston originally. Uh, he's 35 years old. And I think, I mean, in terms of young artists dealing with represent, representational painting, I think he's really a standout artist for a number of ways. You know, he has these typologies, which you can see here in the booth, domestic interiors, self-portraits, uh, images of sports scenes that interest him. Taking these things that are close to him and rendering them with a particular sort of uh, intensity of perspective, color, patterning, that makes them feel kind of visually new. This is really the first time that audiences are getting to see what amounts to a, you know, a solo exhibition of, yes. of Jonas's work uh, yes. here in, in Europe, Yeah, yes. which is one of the reasons we wanted to kind of bring this over here. At a fair like Freeze, where people maybe are, are expecting a certain kind of um, say conceptual side of things to, to encounter this kind of straight ahead representational painting with such strength I think is sort of a, a surprise you know what I mean it stands out for that reason which is another reason we wanted to bring it to this particular context. So we're at 
Salon 94. And I want to ask you about the Carlo Molino chair. It's a very special chair. It was done in 1951 for a publishing company called The Lattice. Um, it was an art book publishing company, and it was the prototype. It's actually the second bent wood chair that was ever made. For us, we are noticing that a lot of artists look at Carlo Molino's work, both the photographs um, from the 60s, mostly the Polaroids, uh -huh. when he took kind of prostitutes, dancers, local women, and photographed them in his own home. So for example, the Richard Prince, Richard who's been very influenced by Carlo Molino, uh, when I told him I was going to show this painting, he said, fantastic, the chair completes the picture. For me, it's a, it's a place to showcase something very rare and very special and mix it in, keep Molino alive through the young artists.